In an earlier tutorial, we looked at the formation of polyethylene and we talked about how we started with a monomer, C2H4, and from that we were able to form polymers with very large backbones of carbon atoms. Now when we have a very long linear backbone, as drawn there, what we're actually referring to is something called high density polyethylene. And high density polyethylene tends to be produced at low pressures. But there is actually another type of polyethylene that can be produced at high pressures. And at high pressures, we actually get something called low density polyethylene, LDPE. And the way that low density polyethylene differs is as follows. We would still have a backbone of sorts. But then attached to that backbone, we would also have branches. So we might have a branch that looks something like this. CH2, CH2, CH3. Then we might just have some hydrogens here and here. We might end up with another group, CH2, 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 CH3 some hydrogens, and we might end up with some more branch groups further along. Now the big difference between our low density polyethylene and our high density polyethylene is that each of those molecules or each of those chains can no longer tightly pack against each other. So in high density polyethylene, we have nice linear polymer chains. They can stack very closely onto each other and produce a very regular crystalline structure. But with low density polyethylene, it's a lot harder for those molecules to get close to one another and produce a neat crystalline structure. The important thing to point out is the main thing we've changed here is the pressures that the polymers are being produced at. So by changing the conditions, we can change whether we're producing a linear polymer or a branched polymer. And this will be true for various other different polymerization reactions. So how does this affect whether the polymer we're producing is amorphous, crystalline or semi-crystalline? Well, in the case of high density polyethylene, we have our carbon backbone. And these polymer chains can vary in length. We're going to have hydrogens connected to each carbon. And as a result, our next polymer chain is going to stack very closely to this one. And we've seen in earlier tutorials how intermolecular bonds form. So our next chain is going to come along. The hydrogens are going to be attracted to the exposed carbon atom. And we end up with this type of arrangement between the two chains. The important thing here is the two chains can be packed very closely together. Hence high density because we have a lot of molecule in a very compressed space. So here we have intermolecular bonds forming between the carbons and the hydrogens here, here, here and so on throughout the molecules. The important thing is they're very tightly packed and in fact what we'll end up with is a reasonably high degree of crystallinity in this particular material, high density polyethylene. What we'll end up with is long polymer chains sometimes folded back on themselves like so. We then might end up with a new chain close to that one. This chain might then connect to another group where we have crystallinity or a nice regular structure within that polymer. So we see two different regions in the polymer that we've just drawn there. We see crystalline regions but we also see amorphous regions and this might represent an amorphous region here. I guess the important thing to point out is that crystallinity is a continuum where we have 0% crystallinity on one end, we have 100% crystallinity on the other end, 
and no polymer will be truly 100% crystalline. We'll always end up with areas where the polymer is amorphous as a result of the cooling process. So here we see our high density polyethylene. Now let's compare that to low density polyethylene. So I'm just going to simplify my drawing for this one. What we're going to have is we're going to have our backbone and we're going to have various different branches of different lengths coming off of that backbone. That might be a long polymer chain that folds back on itself. But because of the branches, we can see that it's no longer as easy for those two molecules to get close to one another. We might then end up with another molecule. And again, it's going to be a branched molecule. And again, we see it's a lot more difficult for that to get close to the other molecule. What we're looking at here is low density polyethylene. Low density because there's more free space within that molecule. And each of these high density polyethylene and low density polyethylene will have advantageous properties for different applications. So if we assume that high density polyethylene has a relatively high level of crystallinity, then we can assume that low density polyethylene has a relatively low level of crystallinity. We might end up with a lot less neatly layered areas, but there'll still be a certain degree of crystallinity in certain regions. Now at the far end of this crystallinity continuum, we're going to have materials that are almost completely amorphous. And we'll just sketch an example of one of these now. So here we have an example of a polymer called phenol formaldehyde. And phenol formaldehyde is used for things such as electrical sockets and electrical fittings. Because of its applications, it needs to be very heat resistant. And in fact, it's actually a thermosetting plastic, meaning once it's been formed and shaped by chemical reaction, it can no longer be melted and reused. It's been set into place and can't be reheated. Now what we see in this particular network is a lot of crosslinks between molecules. We see a heavily crosslinked network of covalent bonds. And in actual fact, these three branches here would go on and connect to another benzene ring. Here would connect to another benzene ring. And here would connect to another benzene ring and so on. So what we end up with is a very strongly bonded network. And in fact, this will quite often form just one very large molecule within the material. Now, because of the structure and the nature of this particular polymer, it is highly amorphous. It doesn't exhibit any crystallinity as a result of how the molecule is arranged. So on one hand, we've seen high density polyethylene, which has a high level of crystallinity. We've then seen low density polyethylene, which has a small amount of crystallinity. And here we've seen phenol formaldehyde, which is highly amorphous. Hopefully what you will have noticed is that the linear molecules tend to form much more crystalline structures, whereas the branched molecules sit somewhere in between. And then at the far end, we have the cross-linked molecules, which tend to form our more amorphous structures. So in the next video, we're going to look at how all of these structural elements affect the properties of different polymers.